How's everybody doing today? Good. All right. Um, uh, please excuse my voice. I'm uh, getting over a cold. So um, I'll do my best to jam through this so that way you guys get to um, actually make some film today. So in the, hopefully in the second session. So it's a very hands-on production. So are you guys ready to make some film? All right. Uh, my name is Twee Pham. I'm a sixth grade teacher over at Creative Connections Arts Academy, not too far away from here. CCAA, right, okay. And um, there's all my information. If you ever uh, uh, contact me, have your teacher contact me because I have equipment too. If they ever need anything or have any questions, I'm, I'm more than willing to help you guys out too because I know how hard it is to get equipment and, and to get questions answered. So I've um, <clears throat> been doing the SIVAs for about 10 years now with my students. So it's, it's been awesome. It's been a journey. So hopefully you guys are on that journey and understand that it is an ongoing process, okay? All right, so let's start out here. Um, and the idea of this, um, this workshop is to let you guys know that you guys can make really high quality film for like a low budget, okay? Um, one that I tell my students is that you wanna make film so that way everybody looks at it and not say, not bad for a kid. They, you wanna make a, 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 a video that says, you know what, that was awesome, okay? Because I don't, I don't appreciate when somebody says, not bad for a kid. I'm like, that was just a good video, right? So that's what we wanna shoot for, that's what we wanna aim for, all right? All right. Uh, first, okay, please, this is a public service announcement, please do not record uh, this way, okay? Vertically, please record horizontally, all right? Um, I actually have a script for you guys to do that. It's a PSA, it's a really a funny one. So, um, if you see anybody, I can't help it, but I always wanna lean over and go, you gotta hold the camera this way, so, okay? So that's my PSA, that's my only lecture to you guys there. <clears throat> We're gonna watch a quick, uh, a short, this um, uh, video was produced by my students. I think about six years ago, and it actually uh, won the SIVAs. Um, it's very powerful. So for my sixth grade students to, uh, um, it's about bullying, to, um, to pitch it, I was really skeptical because it, it involves a, a lot of uh, like high-end adult stuff. And I said, if you do it right and you, if you do it well, I think you, the message will come across well. So here is the video. That was a video done uh, many years ago. <clears throat> and they actually, the process took months and months because they pitched the idea, they filmed it, they refilmed 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 it, I think a total of 10 times, uh, nine times, and then the final time, like, I think you guys are ready, so I gave them a nicer camera for them to produce. So, and they did it, and the results are what you guys see. So, there are a whole bunch of hot links for you guys. Uh, um, um, uh, what tripods I use and everything uh, uh, on here is what we have here. So you guys, please look around and, and, and look at it, take snap pictures of it and see what you guys uh, get a feel for it. Because for me, I, I don't wanna purchase anything and realize that it wasn't needed or it's flimsy. So I've tried out a lot of things and these are what I found out is most inexpensive and works out well. And you know, you can get your video production going for under a hundred bucks. Oh, at any time if you guys have any question, feel free to just raise your hand because this is an interactive uh, workshop here. Okay, so anywhere from lighting to tripods to uh, iPad holders to clamps to white uh, uh, diffuse lights, um, very basic setup. Yes. I love the iPad, okay? It's a little bit uh, uh, pricey at about five, six hundred dollars, but it has everything on it. Uh, it's preloaded with your camera, pictures, and then iMovie, and then GarageBand, do music, so I call it a one-stop shop because you can do everything video production on the iPad. I used to, uh, I purchased thousand dollars of equipment, but the problem is if your teachers purchase thousand dollars, they're probably not gonna let you touch it. 
So that's what I did, because it's like, it's $1,000, don't touch it. But then I'm like, you guys need to touch it. You guys need to go out there and you guys need to experiment. You guys need to capture footage. So I think that's the best uh, um, um, uh, in the business. Or using uh, um, uh, um, an iPhone. But most smartphone has editing nowadays, so I think a good starter is just using any smartphone that you guys have, because you don't have to go uh, uh, out of the box to do that. But when the bottom line is, when um, I also judge the Sivas too, we, they look at video quality, they look at basically your ideas. So idea goes a long way. I mean, really what I recommend is a tripod because you don't understand half the video gets thrown out because kids don't use tripods. And that's like a $25 fix. Okay, because most of I'm sure you guys have seen really shaky footage, right? And it makes you sick, so that's what we don't want to watch. So make sure you guys get a good tripod or a monopod, which I'll show you guys up here. Okay, and here's the more advanced equipment, which I have here, I'll show you guys the, uh, the Osmo, which means uh, uh, you can put your smartphone on it and you can run around with it. You can get really smooth shots by movements. And I'll let you guys play around with that. I have this, uh, um, love this light right here. This is a, an expensive battery light because you don't always have the, uh, um, the power source to, to, light up your, um, to, to light up your shots. So by just getting a quick battery powered one, it just nice gives you a little backlight where it you need, so it's a great Great light, and that's just on low too. Don't want to blind you guys, but it can go a lot. It can go a lot higher, so it works out really great for you guys. So love that light. Okay, and the question what you ask is, I, I mainly shoot on iPads and um, iPhones. Okay, now. To start out, I always have my students say, uh, give me a pitch, okay? It's called like the elevator pitch. You basically have 30 seconds to give me your idea, okay? And you don't have to give me the details. Uh, two guys, uh, one guy throws down garbage, the other guy says, hey, pick it up, uh, uh, um, that's not right. Facts, 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 the guy understands the lesson, picks up the um, garbage, final shot, throws it in the garbage. End, ending message. I like it, go. Okay, start, uh, start uh, storyboarding. So usually, that's where it starts. Okay, but make sure you're clear on your idea. You don't want to go over there and go, well, thinking about maybe um, two, no wait, three, no, four, four people. Uh, so sit with your team and think about an idea, just really quick, so that's called the pitch. And always start out with, I like to uh, have my kids start out with a PSA, a public service announcement, a commercial. Right? Anywhere from 30 seconds to one minute because they're quick and easy. A lot of kids come up with, I got a movie for you. It's gonna be five hours long. It's like, oh, maybe let's start out a little bit smaller. And then when you make that 30 second to one minute commercial, you are ready to go on and make instructional videos or other things too because you gotta learn the techniques, all right? So that is the pitch. Next, what do you do after the pitch, okay? Oh, when students come and pitch their ideas, this is what, I, this is what they're thinking about. This is what we see right here, Mr. Pham. Oh, there's gonna be battles, there's gonna be jumping, there's gonna be this, there's gonna be that, right? In reality, though, in reality, this is what I get, okay? <laughs> All right? Because it's hard to produce that. Because they're like, oh, there's gonna be laser guns and this. I'm like, lasers, huh? Uh, uh, um, spaceships, how are we gonna produce that in, in that small amount of time, right? So let's make it more realistic. All right, let's take it away and let's do this, let's do that, let's keep it simple, right? Okay? All right, next is the plan. Great pitch, go and talk to your team how you're gonna do it, okay? You wanna think about, you wanna do your research too. If you're doing a video, I'm telling you right now, there's probably a video out there that's very similar, or maybe another style that you like that you wanna use off there. So I like this video, I like their camera angles that they're using. Do your research. Okay, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's something out there that you guys can, uh, um, that's out there that you guys can use. Um, I have storyboards for you guys. Storyboards are so key when it comes down to uh, getting the shot that you want. Before you even touch the camera, you should have a picture in your mind what you want. There's different types of shots as far as, do you want a long shot, a medium shot, or really close up or extreme? So that right there, okay? And most kids, I don't know if you've seen uh, um, footage that key, uh, people capture, they press record and they capture five minutes of whatever. And and they don't ever stop. So that's just their kids capturing footage. So you wanna think, all right, we're gonna stop here, we're gonna change up the camera angles, we're gonna record this one for two seconds, stop there, move the camera. So there's a lot of stop, go, stop, go, stop, go. Because if you look at a typical commercial, there's a lot of stop goes in there, not just one take. Okay, my students like to do theater, so I tell them it's not theater, you guys, it's not curtains open and then the show goes on and you can't stop the show. You can stop. Can we do that take one more time? I, I just didn't feel it. Let's take it again. So you can do that as much. Let's do it one more time, okay? I just, I, you, didn't, uh, you didn't raise your eyebrows up when you asked that question, so let's do it one more time. And so, you can do that. You know, that's the great part about video, 
All right, you can edit it later. All right, so have a plan, okay? Think about your location, think about who's on your team. That's important too, okay? Because you, do, you don't wanna uh, bring in your friends if they're gonna be fooling around because you want a good productive crew, you know? And don't make your crew too big. I usually like a crew of three or four and that's it. And have a job for everybody, which I'll talk about next, okay? So a plan is important, all right? Here are some of the jobs that somebody can have. I need a writer. I need an artist. An artist can create the storyboards. I need a director, somebody that's really uh, uh, um, that's good with people. They can say, "Hey, can you give me that one more time?" They they know what they're looking for. Um, a camera person, actor or actors, and maybe sometimes a prop person or a PA as a personal assistant. Okay. Um, unfortunately, the people behind the scenes do not get the awesome credit they did they do in making movies sometimes. But you guys have seen movies at the end there where there are all those people listening to making the movies, right? Those people's jobs are so important. I mean, look at all the people behind the scenes making this happen. Okay. So that sometimes is important too. So if you if you don't like to act, be somebody behind the scenes. Now. There's a lot of jobs there. It's okay to take on two jobs, right? A director can be an artist too, so you don't need a crew of six or seven people, okay? All right, um, I, wouldn't, I probably wouldn't do it less than two people because usually you want somebody pressing the record and then looking, uh, uh, um, looking at the camera. A lot of times the camera person thinks they just press record and they just walk away. They really gotta look at the shot and see what they want. Oh, 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 you, you went out of frame on that shot. We, we gotta do it again. You stood up too fast, I gotta follow you. So they really have to understand what they're looking for. Okay, it's not just pressing the button person. It's really capturing, and you gotta remember, what you guys see on that screen is what the audience see, right? And so that's what the, you guys are trying to pull out that emotion, you guys are pulling out that feeling, you guys are pulling out everything off of that screen. So make sure you guys are seeing uh, uh, um, the awesomeness that the audience should see, right? Uh, pick your shots when you guys are storyboarding. Don't just take one shot. Okay, be creative. This is what separates a, a, uh, um, an okay video with a great video because you guys get creative with your shots. Okay, and we'll show you some examples. Um, your shots might include movement. Okay, your shots might be an over shoulder dialogue shot. So you have to really think about that. You gotta think about where am I doing this? Now if somebody's screaming, get out of here. I'm like, ooh, we should move in for a close up on that shot because we wanna capture that anger. Because if the audience sees this, <coughs> excuse me, if they see this right here, it's like really personal, right? But when they see far away, when they're yelling at you, get out of here, it's not as personal. So you really wanna think about the shots you're doing. And I will question my students, why are you choosing this long shot here? Isn't he turning off the water? Don't you want to actually zoom in closely to show them that they're shutting off the water? So pretty tight shot there. Why don't you change up the storyboard for that? And then I'll ask them, why is there so much dead space here? Why don't we zoom in a little bit? You know? And then it makes you think because if that's what you're drawing on your storyboard, then that's what you should be capturing. Does that make sense? Okay? I mean, I think that's what I love about this process. Whatever you guys are thinking about, you can actually capture that. Isn't that cool? I mean, it's like, imagine big, you know, think big because it can happen, all right? Um, that question too, why iPad too? On that iPad, we have a green screen app. So if you guys need to, you guys can put, you guys can add in green screens things. We did a science lessons where we did nocturnal animals. And all of a sudden, hey, look, there's the snow out and pop right there. So if you imagine it, it can happen, you know? So that's what I love about uh, the process of filmmaking because think big guys, okay? Think big. All right, this, uh, uh, this is created on purpose, but this is a one shot that one of my students did. So it's just holding the camera and without cutting and just doing a one shot take. Action. Hey, Sean, let's get in the car. Okay, you know we can save gas by riding our bikes and stuff in school? That's a, that's a good idea. Yeah, that sounds good. Now that's a little bit extreme, I know that, but, but still most students say, well, let's just film it and we just, uh, just sweep moving, where actually the next video was done with multiple shots, so very different feel to it. So. Hey, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, let's ride our bicycles and push to school. Yeah, that's gonna be cool.
So just a little cutting and, and, and thinking about your shots, getting a couple of close-ups, and it doesn't take that much longer to, to really think about it and plan it out there. After you have everything established, what's really important is that you practice, okay? And that's again, that, that, that making that good video into an awesome video. Because a lot of times I said, uh, they'll say, oh, we're ready, Mr. Fam, can we have our equipment go outside? I go, bring up your crew. Ready, action. And they should be able to say their lines. Think about what your hands are doing. Think about what your eyebrows are doing, what your head's doing. Because you are truly acting. And it doesn't lie. When it captures you and it moves in on you, it moves in on you, it really captures everything on your face. So if you're angry, you got to show it. That's what the term acting means. You really got to believe it. Okay? Just like that girl crying. You know, she re really didn't cry. You know, they just put water on her face. But we felt that. Hopefully we felt that. I felt that. So that's what we want to do. We really want to make people feel uh, um, what you wrote up. If you want to feel anger, then act like it. So rehearse your movements too, okay? So that's a huge difference. I would say usually practice th at least three times, maybe five. Think about blocking how you're moving, where you're standing up, so that way the camera person sees and understands how you're moving too, okay? Well, you stood up too fast on that one. Slow it down so I can watch your movement. Or move faster, the camera person, right? A lot of practice. One of my favorite uh, um, directors, uh, um, he um, wrote and directed Spy Kids and um, Lava Girl. But you can see this scene, he's just rehearsing. And then he's saying, yep, that's the angle that I want. He's right there behind there writing all that notes down there. And you're just acting out that he doesn't have a guitar in hand, but he's just walking to see how that shot's going to look. And you guys can do that. With the iPad again, you turn to camera mode and you snap a picture and go, is this the shot that we want? And if that's what you want, then yeah, do that. Okay? A lot of times I hear my students, I'm like, why didn't you move in? Oh, we were going to do that. Then do it. You know? You can stop and do it. So get the shot that you guys want. Rehearse it. Take a look at it. Okay? It's video, you guys. Um, in Hollywood, they use film. That costs money. Because anytime they press record, it costs money because it's recording on film. Video is free. If you don't like the shot, eventually it, it, you can delete it after the project's done. Don't delete anything, by the way, too. You want to keep everything just in case. All right? So practice your shot. Rehearse it. Look at the shots. Okay? Stay focused. This is important too, okay? Because a lot of times people are, well, I'm not doing anything. So then that's when it turns to start fooling around, okay? All right, everybody needs to on board because sometimes there is a little bit of dead time and, and, and this person's really not working the most, but in the end, we're all working, okay? Uh, if one person's editing, we should, a, a couple of people should be looking at what's going on. If somebody's drawing the storyboard, that communication is there with everybody. Is this the shot that you want, camera person? Is this the shot you want, director? So that constant communication is, is important and stay focused, all right? Everyone can be working at that time, okay? All right, we're gonna watch that same video that we did before, and I wanna show you guys what the storyboard that they, uh, the, they drew up. And their image in their head and their drawings came to life. So we kind of see that process to understand, like, that's a cool process. So here's the video with, uh, without the breakdown. Now, watch the storyboard. You see some arrows moving around because they change things. They move things around. They say, you know what? Can we get this shot first? Absolutely. This is just a plan. This is a set plan. Move it around in post. Shot of the teddy bear in the mirror. Close up of the hand. Mid shot. Smile fades. Extreme close up. Side shot. Stupid. Close up, turns. Final message, then fast. Okay, again, that shot didn't work out. Drop it off your storyboard. We're gonna move that one forward. That's fine. As long as you have an idea that what you guys are gonna do. All writers write a rough draft and then they improve on it and get a final draft, right? So that's, what, that's exactly what you guys are doing. And if you don't like it, refilm it again. Okay, I sometimes will say, we, we're, we're arguing right now because we don't know whether to shoot from this angle or that angle. Shoot from both and then decide later what you guys want. Why not? You know, so rather to have it than not to have it. Okay, so, yes? Um, 
You said that uh, in Hollywood, uh, they use film instead of video. How can they use that? Uh, the quality, because it's always, it, it's, 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 um, the quality of film is sometimes better, you know, but they're going digital too, so it's it's a mixture of preference too. But old school is uh, um, they always shot on film, you know. So uh, and some um, some directors do because that has that grainy look. So some people like that. Some people are moving away from it and still using digital. So I mean it's minute sometimes, but yet some it's like the preference. You guys have seen all the TVs where it kind of looks more realistic. Where I don't like the realistic look. I don't like that 4K look. I like just the traditional. Look. So it's kind of like preference, but uh, um, but usually the quality of picture is is higher end. Okay. Yes. They, all my students use iMovie, so it's whatever is, is, um, um, is offered on um, the iPads. Um, there is an occasional time that they will use Final Cut Pro if they really want to color something. Okay, but we don't usually do a, a lot of advanced because we're try I'm trying to show them that there's, you can do a lot for just a little bit of equipment and you don't have to go in high end. Because I think really if we focus, if you guys focus on more the story and the idea rather than, oh, I'm going to add this, I'm going to add that, sometimes it, you guys are overdo overthinking it. Just come up with a great idea because it always starts out with a good story. I think that's what it comes up with, a good story and a great idea. And then you guys sprinkle on your creativity and your little bit of great acting and I think that's what really makes a good movie, okay? It's a, this is a great step to go on there. And I will see in my students, I will see a lot of times it goes like, I, is there any way I can do this? I'm like, actually you can. Let's, let's introduce you guys to a better program, okay? Yeah. In our class we use WeVideo? Or? Absolutely, yeah. We, the fortunate thing is all platforms kind of function the same way. You guys have timelines, right? You guys have a video timeline and you guys have an audio, a couple audio uh, timelines. So they all kind of work on. The only thing that's different is maybe you use control this versus control V versus control T. So they all have the shortcut buttons, but they all kind of do the same deal where you cut and then you move your clips around, right? You add your audio track, you can lower and higher. So they, and you add in your transition, you add in your titles. So if you work with one, you kind of can work with a uh, the rest of them. iMovie is kind of what I've used from the way back then, and everybody's been adding more and more things to it. But I've used different types of, I use WeVideo, so I'm like, very similar, you know? Yes? Well, if you were trying to use all that equipment, where would you get it? Like off of Amazon? Amazon is my number one place to go to because I, I think it's easy. I, I read the reviews. I used to go to other websites, but I like reading the reviews and somebody say, oh, it's very flimsy. So I, I take their advice for it. You know, so yeah, it's, it's sometimes I get stuff that is not worth it. Sometimes I get stuff and I'm very, very happy with it. So it's hard sometimes. So that's why some, you guys can look at my stuff and if you guys really like it, uh, I'll tell you guys about it and you know, try it out and see what you guys think about it, okay? Now, sound is really important too, okay? Unfortunately, with the iPad, you guys don't get great quality microphones. It's decent, so my recommendation is that you get in close to record. Make sure you guys are very aware of your surroundings too. Okay, if you guys are filming at recess time, probably not the best time to get good dialogue footage because it is really loud, all right? Uh, when we're judging the, uh, um, the SEVAs too, you gotta remember that sound is half of your um, video project, right? Sound is half of your video project. Uh, anybody know percentage here? What is half in percentage, anybody? What's half? Okay, and uh, take it further. If you get 50% on a test, what is that usually? An F, right, so if half your video is really bad, you see what I mean? Uh, then basically that's an F quality, okay? We look at things and we hear things and then if we're hearing, we can't hear the dialogue, it's like, well, then I'm tuned out. So focus on that. Sometimes we can record things in uh, um, post-production too. I had one project where the kid is turning off the faucet and you really couldn't hear the faucet. So she went in the back room and I think she grabbed uh, um, like a water bottle or something that squeaked a little bit, her, her water bottle, and she, and she tightened it and it sounded like that and she added it in later. So just make sure that it's in a quiet room or somewhere so you can all add that in at a later point. Yes? That's like the, that's the afterwards that you're putting the audio in afterwards. Like the, uh, um, in Hollywood, uh, um, you gotta look it up, it's really cool, where they make these sound effects. If you're walking on snow, it's not really somebody walking on snow. It's actually two people in the room, three people in the room, taking sand or taking uh, uh, um, clamshells, and they're walking. Horse hooves, horse running, they take coconuts and put it on the sand. Because when a director and a producer really wanna hear that sound, and everything is muffled up there, they add that sound in later, okay? 
So they bring actors in to do voiceovers that we couldn't hear that line. You got to come in and redo that line over again. So it's amazing. So that's another post-production. A foley artist? Yeah, well, yeah, foley artist or a like uh, um, um, somebody doing voiceovers if they if they didn't hear the sound. Yes. Remember that um, copyright materials is super duper important that you don't use it. Okay, because uh, uh, music especially and images is where we come into a lot of issues. Um, if you guys are planning to enter into the SIVAs, it is a complete no-no and your video will get automatically thrown out. So think about that because somebody else produced the music, so um, make sure it's, it's royal free. Uh, be careful too, because a lot of times on YouTube they say, oh, this is royal free, but what they did is they might have borrowed it from another person, which borrowed from another person, which borrowed from another person. So it's really difficult. Um, there are uh, using GarageBand, creating your own beats. There are all programs out there where you have created yourself. So that is usually the safe bet. It's usually uh, going to sites like that. Um, there's like uh, uh, um, a couple of uh, um, like SoundClouds where you can uh, um, buy and license for one song. So things like that where you got to make sure. So in the end, they'll give you the paperwork to say that, hey, I, I've rented it for one project. So make sure you guys, uh, um, um, your music and your image are royal free. Yes? Um, can't you use images off of Advanced searches, yeah, if you got to make sure that they are royal free and that, that is uh, um, um, used. But if, um, and if you need a picture, sometimes I just capture it myself, you know, and then you can go over there. There's stock footage that are free out there. You're absolutely right. If you go to the Google advanced searches and, and make sure that it's royal free, that you can have those images. Yes? And if you go on iMovie, you can use the music. Absolutely right. Um, I believe Wii Video and iMovie, they have their stocks uh, music. Um, those are great, but the only problem is very limited, right? You only have 10 choices or whatever, and, you know, and they're overused sometimes. So if you want to go a little bit out of the box, it's sometimes it is worth it. I know for a fact when we judge, we hear that same song over and over again. So it could be repetitive. So if you want something original, then go out there and, and go beyond there. Yep. Is iMovie have, like, more songs? Than Th that's all that, yeah, whatever they provide for you. You can go into um, GarageBand and, and, and spiff it up a little bit more, okay? Yeah, GarageBand because it's within i uh, um, uh, within the iPad, and you can create your beats. There, there's fake, uh, gu uh, not fake, but guitar things you can add into it. They have a piano pad. They have all sorts of instruments that you can add in there. I like the beat section too because it has a, a simple, you know, so you can add in the doom, doom, doom. So, and then you just add in. It just has to be simple. Just something to break that, just the the dialogue piece, just to add a little bit of a touch to it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, it's, it's sometimes it is difficult. It is difficult. Um, I, um, what was it? Um, um, what's that app called? Um, I look it up, but there's an app that, that if you play the music, it'll come up with an artist's name on it. And so that's where you check on it to, um, uh, um, to, to, yeah, if it doesn't pop up, if it pops up, you know, I mean, definitely if you've heard it on the radio, it's not royal free. You know, but there's some beats sometimes like, oh, this is good. I wonder if it's royal free. You search on YouTube and it says royal free, but, you, but that's where it comes difficult because it, one person might say, one person might have taken off of the person and go, oh yeah, it's royal free, but then it ends up not to be. So then it, it becomes a really touchy subject there. Okay, so again, be safe. Use Wii Video uh, Music, iTunes, or create it yourself because that way for sure 100% it is yours. Okay? All right, and again, Lighting, okay? Lighting's very important too, because if it's dark, we can't see it. So um, if you guys can shoot outside, that's great. Be very aware of where the sun's at, so that way you guys have good lighting. If you guys can afford a little bit of a side lighting, then add that in there. But if you don't, again, just, just utilize what you guys do have, okay? Um, I have for you guys today, I have some free swag for you guys, okay? So free swag. So it's not the best thing, but by just putting a flashlight sometimes at the end of it, Add in a little bit of uh, um, um, a little bit of lighting for you guys. I have free flashlights for you guys. Okay, so just to add a little bit. Like again, it's not the best, but when you're in a pinch, it's not bad. Um, I, can I borrow your notebook? If it's too bright, sometimes we'll show you in a video. I bounce out the light onto somebody's face, so it adds on there. Okay, so it's amazing what lights do. So and you just and again, you just have to take a white poster paper. Sometimes I actually have a reflector you guys can use, but if you don't, you can't. If you don't have a bounce light, then go ahead and just use any white piece of paper. It's not the best, but it's at least you can bounce some of the light in there, okay? And I'll show you guys the difference that it does make. Again, feel free to play around. I'm almost done, so we're gonna be playing pretty soon. All right, here are some great tutorials on lighting too, 
okay? They're more advanced lighting. It shows you guys like the three-point lighting, which is really important. So if your teachers can afford that and you have that, that's a great way to do it. But sometimes in a pinch, just use one or two lighting. So um, I bought this from Ikea. It's like four or five bucks. And I put a light in here, and it gives great diffused light. Okay, but again, you have to have a place to hang it up. So it, there, and you gotta have a place to, to um, plug it in. But this is a great lighting source because it has good diffused light for your source, okay? Great for green screening. All right, and when you're done, I'm telling you guys, everybody look at it and go, dude, that was like magic. How'd you do that? Because it is, all right? It's just magic, all right? How did that, do you really have a, a Transaurus Rex? Yeah, magic, okay? All right. Okay, this is a must. I, I know when you guys make the video, and you're like, all right, we're gonna watch a video, and oh, no, 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 don't, don't watch it, don't watch it, don't watch it. And I used to do the same thing. I'm like, oh, I don't wanna embarrass kids, we don't wanna watch it. But reflection is so important, okay? If this is your first video, it's so important to talk about it. I always start out with, uh, and if we have time today, we'll do it. What's two things that they did well? Uh, dialogue was good, they spoke well. Lighting was good, good angles, good cuts, okay? What do you think they can improve on? Dialogue wasn't loud enough. Uh, sound, I can hear this. Um, a lot of dead space on that one. So it's important, because if you guys are all seeing things that they can improve on, the judges will see this, the things that they can improve on. Does that make sense? So better to catch it now, then you probably will hear the same thing that the judge says. See, I told you the judge says you should, uh, it was too noisy. So you, if you have time, to go reshoot it. Okay, but that reflection is important too because you, you don't want to set up a pattern for yourself for shooting in the dark or not speaking up uh, loud enough. So that's important too, that reflection is huge, okay? And it just takes three. What's two things they can improve on or two or three things they can improve on? What's three things that they did well? So if, you're, if, you're dial if your acting is good, keep that actor because th they're a good actor. Or if your angles are good, then keep it up, what you guys are doing. Does that make sense? Are we good? Any other questions so far? All right. Okay, it's so important though. Be creative and have fun, because when the project is not fun, then it's not fun anymore, okay? You should be energized about it. Like I said, I love that process when I'm thinking about, oh my gosh, we just did what I thought about. Remember we were talking about doing that, and look, it's right there on video. And I think that's the most amazing thing. It is magic, right? We created it, so that's cool, you know? That's cool, all right? Um, and, and I love it too, that, that project that you guys saw at the beginning there, it was like, I was there when you guys were pitching me that story and look at it, now it's, it's, it's come to life. Exactly how you explain it. You guys, whatever I was thinking, how you guys were gonna do it, you guys did that, so it's amazing, all right? Anybody have any questions? Uh, I'll have my um, information again. Um, oh, here, watch this one. This is a quick uh, video uh, um, promo that my kids did to kind of show you little tips and things, okay? Watch where the lighting bounces. I love that part. It doesn't take much, but boy, does it make a difference. If you want your video to look more professional, add different kinds of shots and angles to your production. Just moving in on the shots there. Over the shoulder dialogue shots. Be creative and have fun with your video. 
That's my signature cheesy thumbs up. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, so, again, if you guys need help, please contact me. So, today I have four scripts for you guys, okay? If you guys can get in, not now, but if you guys can get in teams of t uh, 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 three or four, it'll probably be best. Now, here's the... Um, here's a communicating nowadays. It basically comes down to two kids texting each other, right? So you have, think about your shots. And then in the end, the kids are basically right here. So they don't even talk. So, but it gives an illusion like they're talking, from, uh, they're texting from far away. And then, so you wanna go come over? And you can whisper to yourself, are you coming over? Yeah, I'll come over later, so, okay. I'll see you later. You know, so that, that little funny script there. So that's communicating nowadays. Um, I have friends don't let friends record vertically. You know, so there's that script right there. Uh, uh, involves two or three, all these involves three or four people. Take the script, if you want to modify it, be my guest. It's just, this is just a sample of things, what to do. I have my first iPod, uh, uh, iPad video. So just creating how to, uh, um, an iPad. Um, this one doesn't involve any dialogue, you don't want to act, but it's who did it, who did it. It involves three kids. One person looks over here, I think somebody passed gas, and they're looking at each other. That person's blaming this kid. Right? And then this kid looks over, and that person's blaming that kid. And in the end, the kid goes, <laughs> he was the middle kid. See, so, okay. So, a lot of expressions, okay? When you guys are doing that, because we're gonna have a lot of time, you guys think about your shots. Now, just think about, I gave you guys lots, just to kind of an example of what a, di a, a story book looks like. But you're only probably gonna need about nine, maybe 12. So do, you don't have to fill up the whole deal. So don't feel like you have to fill up the whole thing. Your videos will be today, 30 seconds, uh, 30 seconds would be awesome, all the way to a minute if you need to. But I always try to aim for that 30 seconds, which makes it a little bit more difficult because it just really cuts it down. So you have, choose one script with your team, talk about it. Um, um, you guys gonna drop your storyboard. And then afterwards, after you guys give me a quick rehearsal, you guys can use the iPad. And while you guys are talking in your team, go ahead and talk in here. I'm gonna show you guys some video, uh, some audio equipment that you guys can play around with, which is really neat. If you guys need to use a lighting, we're gonna play around with that. So um, uh, uh, this time is yours to think about it. I really want you, to, I want you guys to aim for sh uh, uh, um, producing that video today. So that way you guys can walk home with saying we created this video today. All within an hour and a half. I believe uh, we're out of here at 2.30 or 2.45 is the when the session's over? Or the seconds? 2.30. Okay, that gives you guys an hour and 15 minutes. I think you guys can do that. Um, we're going to critique this now. I want you guys to watch this with a teacher's eye. And what we're going to do is two things they can improve on, two things they could, uh, 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 two things they did great, two things they can improve on. These ladies were nice enough to volunteer their video project. And remember, we did this all in less than an hour, hour and a half. So this is really thrown together quickly. I was telling you, this group, who, which we're having fun over here, imagine if you guys had the normal week or a week and a half. Or I usually give my kids two, two and a half weeks to produce this. So for putting it together in less than an hour, great job. Okay, let's watch this video. What? Look at how you're recording. So, so you can you record? No. No. So, why are you recording? There. That's the one. And now I know. And now I can talk to that. All right. Good job, guys. Okay. So, what's something they did well? What's something they did well? Yes. Um, they did a good shot. Good, good shots, good angles, right? I agree, okay? What's something they did well? Anybody else? Um, something they did well is like when, uh, whenever Right, different angles, they, they, they focus on the dialogue shots, good, good, okay? One more, anybody else? What they did well, okay? Uh, what do you think they can improve on for next time? What do you think? Smoother transitions to the close-up. Maybe a smoother transition. Um, if you're using the same shots to cut up there, yeah, a jump, they call that a jump cut, so make sure you guys are changing up angles a little bit so that way it gives it a different feel of it rather than just using that same shot and just cutting to one another. What's something else? Um, uh, one of them kept looking at the camera. Looking at the camera. So make sure next time that you don't focus on the camera because I say it's like breaking that fourth wall when you're looking at the camera, you're looking at the audience, right? So it's like, it, unless you intend to, where you're like looking at the audience and say, hey, don't do that, then it's intended, right? Very good, but again, for doing it in less than an hour, right? This is where I tell my students, would you like to go back and reproduce it? And most of the times, yeah, we can do that because it won't take much longer for us to get the shot that we need. We can refilm that, okay? So 
uh, um, not bad. You guys, a lot of you guys having fun with it. Yeah, okay, yeah. it's not too bad to produce one. Just getting that multiple angles and 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 understanding how video works. You guys will produce that Siva video in no time. Okay. Um, I leave my information. If you guys write down my information, you have a question. If you guys need lighting, if you guys need whatever for the SIVA, it's in March is the deadline. Let me know how I can help you guys out. If you guys want to send it to me and go, what do you think about it? I will give you guys feedback. Or if you guys need extra feedback, let me know. Because it's really important that you guys are getting that feedback. Okay? All right. Any other questions that I can answer for you guys before you guys go? All right. Great job today.